Instant Ralston and regular Ralston, the hot full wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have entered a warehouse on the planet Venus to rescue an abducted explorer. As they creep up a flight of stairs, two criminals lurk above them behind a huge barrel. Get your hands up. We're space patrolmen. Come up and get us. Come on, Happy. Watch up the barrel, Paris. Roll it, Tolliver. Hey, Commander, look out! We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, the Venus Dulanium Mystery. Hey, look, there's the moon. And there's Saturn with the rings around it. And here's Terra, the man-made planet. Oh, hi, Space Patrollers. This is Captain Dick Tufeld. I bet you think I'm spotting stars through a telescope. Well, nope, I'm just counting up my interplanetary space coins, the slick-looking coins you get in every package of the wonderful hot whole wheat power cereal, Good Hot Ralston, instant or regular. Say, have you started collecting these sensational space coins yet? Well, you better start now because they're lots of fun. And say, are you starting your day off with a good breakfast, a power breakfast with Good Hot Ralston, the cereal that warms you up and builds you up? The cereal that has a flavor that you just can't beat? Well, gang, no other cereal gives you so much power, yet tastes so good. That's why Commander Corey made Good Hot Ralston the official hot cereal of the Space Patrol. So be real, Space Patrollers. Every morning, eat Good Hot Ralston, instant or regular. And remember, Good Hot Ralston comes in new packages now, with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front and a swell interplanetary space coin inside. And now, for today's Space Patrol adventure, the Venus Thulanium Mystery. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol headquarters on Terra, Cadet Happy is so absorbed in looking at designs for a new spaceship, he isn't aware that Buzz has entered and is standing beside him at the desk. Oh, I can lock it. Think it'll get off the ground, Happy? Will it? Why, it's the slickest... I didn't hear you come in. Well, well, that's all right. I, I left them out because I thought you'd be interested. Well, by the way, I had to call off a demonstration of a new type spacesuit for this afternoon. Hmm? What happened, sir? I got a message from an old friend of mine, Frank Michelson. Oh, isn't he the former space patrol agent that became an explorer? Well, that's the one. There have been some rumors around that Michelson found a big Tulanium deposit on Venus. Apparently, it's true. Tulanium? Say, if it's any kind of a strike at all, Michelson can take it easy the rest of his life. Well, Frank Michelson wouldn't take it easy if he was the richest man in the universe. His message wasn't very informative, but I gather he expects a little trouble. Over Thulanium? I would be surprised. It's rare enough to make a lot of people willing to take chances to get their hands on it. Well, we'll know the whole story when Frank gets here. He's due at 1500. Meantime, in his room at the Terra Space Hotel, Frank Michelson dictates some correspondence into a tiny micro tape recorder, a machine that's almost entirely engulfed in his huge hand. Red Brinkerhoff, President, Interplanet Mining Company, Mercury City. Dear Ed, in view of recent developments, I suggest that we postpone further action until I consult Commander Corey. I'll be on Mercury in about five days to explain fully the reasons for the suggested delay. Come in. Yes, gentlemen. What can I do for you? We just want to talk to you, Michael. Can you talk about that? Huh? Sure. Sit down, won't you? We'll stand, thank you. And Mr. Michelson, I wouldn't go reaching in that drawer for a gun if I were you. Parish here has a blast gun, and I have something almost to effect. I gather you're Jake Zalabar. That's right. You're coming with us. Is that so? <laughs> All right, Michelson, get up. And don't try anything like that again. I think this will take the fight out of you, Michelson. Hold still. Nothing to worry about, Michelson. Just an electro injection of coffee. Right? Be able to walk and talk, but you'll be incapable of offering the resistance. You'll be nice and peaceable. Talk as all inhibits all traces of anger. Now stand up. Stand up, Michael. What are you going to do with me, Zalabar? You'll accompany Parrish and me to Karazana, the Venus jungle. I have a hunch the selenium deposits aren't too far away. 
You passed through Tarazan a few weeks ago. Yeah, we can work on you there without any interruptions. Nobody will ever come prowling around that old warehouse at the end of Meridian Street. Now, come along, Michelson. You're going to walk quietly between us. Take each other around, Paris. Okay. <laughs> hey, he's peaceful as a lamb. For his own good, he'd better remain. Any word from Mr. Michelson, Commander? Not a thing, Happy. I can't reach him at the space of hell. The clerk says nobody answers the phone in his room. Hmm, it's 16.30. He should have been here an hour and a half ago. It isn't like Frank to miss an appointment. Let's go over to the space of hell and check on him. A few moments later, Buzz and Happy are examining Frank Michelson's room. He sure didn't leave anything here to indicate where he went or why. Look here in the floor by the desk, huh? Somebody knocked a book there. And some papers. Michelson is very neat. It doesn't like him to leave things lying around like this. Let me look through this desk. Perhaps we can find letters and notes that can indicate who Michelson has been dealing with since he arrived on the Terra. No papers in here. Well, here's something happened. A miniature recorder. Michelson always carried one of these with him. Well, how about listening to what's on it, sir? In the circumstances, might be a good idea. I'll rewind a few feet on it. <laughs> Now. Red Brinkerhoff, husband, Interplanet Mining Company, Mercury City. I can see the voice. Dear Ed, in view of recent developments, I suggest we postpone further action until I consult Commander Corey. I'll be on Mercury in about five days to explain fully the reason for this suggested delay. And then. Dictating a letter when someone interrupted him. Let's see if there's anything else in this tape. I'll run it ahead a little. To any conclusions you like. Now, Zalavar, take your friend Parrish and get out. First, you're going to tell us where this selenium deposit is. It's none of your business. Uh oh, selenium. Don't force us to get rough, Mike. We'll try anything in here. We don't intend to. You're coming with us. Let's go! Michelson did have trouble, all right. He had presence of mind to put on this recorder and leave it in the drawer. Is that all there is in the tape? We'll find out, listen. What are you going to do with me, Zalavar? You will accompany Parrish and me to Tarazan, the Venus Junction. I have a hunch the selenium deposits aren't too far away. Yeah, we can work on you there without any interruptions. Nobody will ever come prowling around that old warehouse at the end of Meridian Street. I guess that's all. Uh... Yeah, this will be a cinch, Commander. All we have to do is notify Venus City Space Patrol to, to go to Carazan. Zalabar and Parrish might be tipped off. We'll handle this one ourselves, undercover. Terrazon, the settlement in the heart of a Venus jungle, owed its existence to one thing, the rare Picatero plant. The fibers of this plant, dried and processed in a certain way, could be woven into a beautiful, shimmering fabric that brought high prices in exclusive shops on all the planet. Then chemists discovered a way to make synthetic Picatero fibers for a fraction of the cost. The demand for real Picatero fabric declined, and with it, the bustling activity of the jungle settlement of Terrazon. Now, visitors to Carazan are few, but the remaining inhabitants are too lacking in vitality or curiosity to pay any attention to new arrivals. At this moment, a surface car stops in front of a bleak warehouse at the end of Meridian Street, and two men get out, calling a third man between them. All right, Michael. Here's your new home. <coughs> I've had enough of this being shoved around, Delamar. Keep your hands off. Well, both apparently of the effects of the top are wearing off. Paris, you'll watch our guests carefully. Okay. Come on, Michelson. Door isn't locked. Go on in. <clears throat> Phew. This place sure reeks. Yes, that's the Picatero. There's several bales here in the warehouse. Isn't that dangerous? I thought raw Picatero gave off poisonous fumes unless it was treated. It does, but don't worry. There's enough ventilation here to keep it from bothering us. What do we do with Michelson? Take him upstairs and lock him in a room. We'll go to work on him later. Why waste time? Let's make him talk now so we can get out of this place. I have a couple of errands to run uptown. All right, Michelson, get up the stairs. Two hours later, a private space cruiser lands at the small, run-down, space-ported Terrazan. And two men in civilian clothes get out. Casually, they wander around the sleepy town. Apparently, two visitors on an aimless stroll. Eventually, they reach Meridian Street and continue down past the row of abandoned warehouses. 
Hmm? Commander, this town is really dead. You should have seen it five years ago when the Picatero market was at its height. The regular boom town, then. Oh, that must be the warehouse we're looking for. Is the surface car in front of us? Yes. Don't call your way down until we get inside. Sounded like it came from up above. Got here just in time. Up the stairs. Quiet. Now, Michaelson, you're not going to get anywhere by being stubborn. Where's that tulanium? I said, where is it? <coughs> Pretty brave, aren't you, Don? Hitting a man with his hands tied. You can spare yourself a lot of pain by telling me where that tulanium ore is. Michaelson. Suppose I should offer you a share of the profits from the millennium in exchange for your pledge to keep your mouth shut. Like you can you offer me a share of what's already mine? All right, Michelson, I'll get it out of you. Salabar, Salabar, lay off. What do you want, Paris? Somebody's downstairs. What? Who? I don't know. There are two of them. I'll just see that Michelson doesn't give any warning. Oh! All right, come on, Paris. What do we do, Russia? No, oh, they might be on. I think they're able to see us until they get to the first end. We'll sneak down to that big barrel at the head of the stairs. I got you. When you come around the corner, we'll push the barrel down on you. Uh oh, they've seen us. Get your hands up. We're safe, Mr. Coleman. Come and get us. Come on, Hap. All right. The barrel. Hey, Commander! Commander, look out! That took care of both of them. Okay. Go get Michelson and bring him out here. I'll go down and get their weapons. All right, Michelson, come on. Up on your feet. We got something to show you. Move, Lively. Oh. Here he is, boss. All right, take a look at these men, Michelson. You know them? Uh, I never saw them before. <laughs> and you never will again. I recognize them, these space patrolmen. Commander Corey and his cadet. Harris, let's finish them off before they come through. Oh, wait, you can't do that. Can't I? Who's to stop us? Well, listen, give them a chance. I'll tell you where the Selene is. I'll uh, make a deal with you. Just give them a chance. All right, Michelson. Where's the Tulane? Five hundred miles up the Ramada River, just south of Lake Clifton. That's the key. Good. We'll take you up there in our ship. Can you let these men go? Oh, no, I can't read that. Farris, drag them to storage bin number three and lock them in with those old bales of people tell them. No, you can't do that. The room the deadly twin. Yes, I know. In that sealed room, they can't survive more than 20 minutes. <laughs> We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Wow, the big game. Only five seconds left. But look at that center move, that basketball. Now he jumps. He shoots. It's good. His team wins. More power to him. And more power to you. Power to think fast. Power to act fast. And gang, you'll get it from a good breakfast with that swell-tasting whole wheat power cereal, Good Hot Ralston. Instant Ralston or regular Ralston. More power because Hot Ralston gives you all the power of whole wheat and twice as much power from the heart of the wheat. That's why a good breakfast with good Hot Ralston means extra protein for powerful muscles, extra vitamins for sturdy growth and steady nerves. And gang, Hot Ralston is the only cereal that gives you so much power yet tastes so good. So join the power team. Get good hot Ralston, instant or regular, right away today at your grocer's. And tomorrow morning, more power to you from good hot Ralston. Look for the new hot Ralston package with the... Look for the new hot Ralston package with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front and the free space coin inside. (laughs) 
And now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Venus Thulanium Mystery. In attempting to rescue Frank Michelson from a warehouse in a jungle settlement on Venus, Buzz and Happy were knocked unconscious by Zalabar and Parrish, two men attempting to learn the location of valuable thulanium deposits. Michelson divulged the location of the rare mineral upon Zalabar's promise to spare the lives of the space patrolmen. But on learning the secret, Zalabar went back on his word and locked Buzz and Happy in a storage vault containing rotting bales of picotero, knowing that the fumes are deadly. Zalabar and Parrish are now on their way toward the Aramazo River with Michelson to check the truth of this claim. Meantime, Buzz and Happy have regained consciousness in the stifling, fetid air of the storage bin. Oh, my head. Oh. Come on, Happy. We've got to break out of here. Where are we, sir? Still in the warehouse. Locked us in the storage bin. It's so dark, I can't see a thing. Here's the door. Let's see if we can get it open. <coughs> my lungs. Smoking rockets. What's that odor? Peek a tell if it isn't cured properly right after it's cut, it produces poisonous fumes. And this stuff is supposed to be valuable? <coughs> oh, we don't stand a chance of breaking down this door. We're getting weaker every second. And the worst of it is nobody knows we're here. Perhaps. Look up the ceiling. It's a blur. My eyes burn. All I can see is a dim blue light. The sky light. <coughs> we can get up there. We can break out under the roof. Yeah, but how do we get out? We climb up the bales. The stack nearly to the ceiling. I can make it. We're getting weak. We've got to make it. What was that? Something. A piece of metal. Oh, it's a bar with a hook on the end. Wrap around the whole of bale. We can use it to break the skylight. Start climbing. Huh? <coughs> Come on, Hap. Here, I'll, I'll give you a hand. That's it. Hold on. I think I can reach the skylight from here. <coughs> Come on, Hap. Out to the skylight. Yes, sir. Careful, don't cut yourself. Oh, fresh air sure feels good. Now, if we can get down off the of I'm still dizzy from those fumes, Commander. Now watch your step when you get to the edge. Here's the ladder. Now, don't try it till you're sure of your grip. Uh, I'll be okay in a minute, sir. Now look down there. The surface car's gone. Yeah. By now, Zalabar's probably blasted off. I hope Michelson's all right. We'll go right to the spaceport and see if we can find anybody that knows which way Zalabar headed. High above the lush jungle of Venus, a spaceship heads westward. Zalabar watches the terrain through a viewscope while Parrish scans the chart. Now, we ought to be over the Aramazo River pretty quick. And then we turn north, is that right? Yeah. We follow the river to Lake Crystal. If Michelson's telling the truth. Well, if he isn't, we'll get it out of him somehow. Speaking of Michelson, are you sure he's tied up tightly back at? Yeah. He won't give us any trouble. <laughs> if we don't find that thulanium, we'll give him plenty of trouble. <laughs> That's for sure. Meanwhile, back in the jungle settlement of Karazan, Buzz and Happy sit in the littered office of a portmaster. What's keeping that portmaster? Sure, they couldn't take him this long to go out to the repair shop and find the mechanic. Maybe they both went fishing. We only get one clue in the direction of Zalabar's ship. Commander, a, a word keeps coming back to me. I think I heard it while we were lying on the floor of the warehouse. What is the word, huh? Oh, There's an odd sounding in there. Ara something or other. Ara Mona? Ara. Ara Maza? Yeah, that's it. Uh, does it mean anything? There's an Ara Maza River some distance west of here. Do you remember anything else? Well, no, sir. And uh, the voices were all mixed up. But this one word seemed to stand out. Happy, turn up that space again. Yes, sir. Former space patrol agent Frank Michael. Frank. Man to Corey's in danger. Locked in a warehouse at the end of Meridian Street in Carazon. Hurry. Corey's in storage bin three. Don't try to contact me. I've held aboard a private cruiser now heading toward Aramata River. You are right, Happy. He's still alive. That's something. Back position unknown. The men holding me, Big Dalabar. Griff Parish. They're taking me up the Aramaza to a point just south of Lake Crystal. They're armed and dangerous. This is Frank Michael. Help Corey first. He's cut off. I don't know where he's going. All right, get to the ship. We'll blast off for the Aramaza. Michael. Michael, you asleep? Oh. Wake up. <clears throat> what do you want? I just want to check something. I'll make sure it's the cabin. Ah, a 
You wish you'd known about this being in here? Place of home. I'll just take it with me so you won't be tempted. We'll be landing pretty quick. And we'll see if you were telling the truth about the Thulanium. Following the course of the Aeromazo River, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy fly high above the surface of Venus. The thick mist shroud the jungle from sight. But the penetrating rays of the infrared view scope show the terrain in sharp detail. Gee, sir, not another word from Michelson. I hope it doesn't mean Zalabar or Paris caught him using the space of well, the weak signal. Atmospheric conditions for the conflict fading out. I hope that's it. You were the only ones that heard him. Funny, my last check was space patrol Venus City. Commander, there's a ship down there at the foot of one of those hills, right near the river. See it? Yeah. Why would they land there? They must have forced Michelson to tell where the selenium deposit is. That means we've got to work fast. Well, Michelson's really in danger now. Right, because we can't risk tipping them off. We'll land on the other side of the hill and work around on foot. Carrying or testing equipment, Zalabar and Parrish force Michelson ahead of them up the steep slope of the hill. Go on, Michelson. Keep moving. You're supposed to be the hardy outdoor type, you know. Never try climbing a hill with your hands tied behind you. You're lucky we aren't making you carry some of the equipment. Save your breath. Keep moving. Uh, there's a storm coming up. How much farther is it, Michelson? We're not dropping aboard. A few hundred yards farther up. It's better not be a stall. I told you there was still any in here, didn't I? Salabar, listen. What? What is it? I thought I heard a roar like spaceship rockets. Just distant thunder. Keep moving. Start working our way up the slope, Happy. We want to be above them when we contact them. Yes, sir. Somewhere on the other side of that ridge. You think they heard our rockets when we landed? I hope not. That storm may have helped us. I'd like to get this job over with before that storm hits us. Listen, Michelson, are you sure you know what you're doing? This trip was your idea. Don't get cute. You're just making it tougher for yourself. Okay. Okay, try some of these rocks. Please, get the equipment. Aren't you going to help? You're going to be fighting the storm pretty quick. All right, I'll give you a hand. All you'll need is the electrospectroscopic analyzer. If you know anything at all about it, you'll recognize Glenium. We know enough about it to tell if you're pulling a fast one, Michelson. Here, how about this chunk of rock? It's too big. Who's asking you? It is too big, Parrish. Here, this is more like it. Put it in the test chamber. I have the dial set. Okay. Get on the power. It's high test lanium. Now you're satisfied? You believe now I was telling you the truth? Yes, Michael. So yes, there's no doubt about it. This land is rich in lanium. We'll make a fortune. Well, let's go back to the ship, huh? Uh, presently. First, there's something we must finish, you and I. Are you forgetting, Tom? Oh. You want to do it here, huh? Why not? Mike has no service purpose. You've decided against the partnership you promised him. Yes. In view of a few things that have happened, your continued existence uh, might prove embarrassing to you. You're referring to what you did to Corey, for example. Yes. But it's getting late. Parish your blast gun, please. Sure. Here, boss. Hold it, Salabar. Yes, well, take care of Parish, Happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, Salabar. Had enough? Yes. Yes, Corey. Parrish, how about you? Uh, apparently, Mr. Parrish is speaking to us. Are you okay, Frank? Yeah, fine, thanks. That seems like old times to see you charging into the rescue, Buzz. You're just returning past favors, huh? Mm-hmm. Happen I heard your space phone signal after you broke out of the warehouse. Oh, so you got out by yourself, huh? I, I might have known it. Happy on time, Mr. Michelson. Then we'll take our prisoners to the ship. Yes, sir. I'll have you loose in a moment, Mr. Michelson. You know, for a while there, I was afraid I was in for it. Uh, listen to that thunder. If it had been a few minutes later, I'd have been drenched to the skin. <laughs> <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, gang. This is Captain Dick Tufel. I'd like to tell you about a space patroller I know. Every morning when he sits down to his breakfast, and you can bet there's always a bowl of good hot Ralston there, he starts thinking about what he's going to do when he's a big guy. One day... He'd like to be a jet pilot and fly a plane faster than the speed of sound. Or be an All-American, the hero of the nation. But one thing for sure, 
Vice Space Patrol Pal is on his way and ready for anything that comes. Because every morning, he eats a good breakfast with a hot whole wheat power cereal, good hot Ralston, instant or regular. Yes, sir, he's packing in vitamins and minerals, too. And mmm, mmm, delicious. Every spoonful tastes better than the one before. Each bowlful tastes like more. And no other cereal gives you so much power, yet tastes so good. So, Space Patrollers, get some today. Good hot Ralston, instant or regular. Look for the new hot Ralston packages with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside and with the swell interplanetary space coin on the inside. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Wallace and Happy have reached the end of an underground passage on the planet Mercury. Through their portable space phones, they hear Major Robertson up on the surface. Commander, how about coming back up to the ship? I've got a strange feeling about this whole layout. You might as well, Robbie. We can't go any farther. Come on, Hap. Yes, sir. Hey, Commander, there's a gate sliding shut. We're sealed in here. A stone gate cut us off. The lock is familiar. Where's that noise come? Commander? Commander, where are you? What's the matter, Hap? Major, the commander was right here beside me, and, and now he's vanished. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Lost Dimension, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Lawrence Dobkin, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Kufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Captain Dick Tufel reporting on something new, something sensational in every new package of rice checks and wheat checks. Listen, Commander Corey is now putting a wonderful new Space Patrol trading card inside every new package of rice checks and wheat checks. And I mean the most exciting trading cards you ever saw. Trading cards with space pictures in full color. Trading cards that gleam and glisten. Trading cards that are good and stiff, just right for flipping. Trading cards that are full size, more than three inches long, more than two inches wide, with an exciting story of the picture on the back of each one. Now, right now, the trading cards are all about rockets and jets and weapons. But that's just series number one. Series number two and number three will follow soon. There'll be exciting pictures of space heroes, stars, and planets. Altogether, there are 40 different exciting Space Patrol trading cards. Now, gang, think of what a terrific collection they'll make. Think of the fun you'll have trading them, clipping them, and learning amazing facts about outer space. So start collecting your official Space Patrol trading cards today. Look for the packages of rice checks and wheat checks that tell you on the outside there's a full-color, full-size Space Patrol trading card inside. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast for our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>